No, the homework assignment was a surprise. So what the whole idea was, here you've got a box with tissue paper and yeah, everything, and because it's Christmas, and what I wanted to have a painting is the paper out of the box and then something like a plane or something peeking out, a boat, a ball, a doll, anything like that, like a still life. So you'd have the box, the paper, you know, the doll sitting there, ribbon and stuff. But ultimately, I don't want those things at all. I want to have good composition, good lighting. That's what we're always going for. Now, you take that simple thing and you just you're like a surprise happening. <laughs> now this is stuff that I was talking with Judy, and it goes in line with what I was talking with her. So Judy goes through and she shows me a lot of photographs of still lifes that she's done over a while, trying to figure out what is her next series of, of paintings that she wants to do. Um, and so as a coach, I'm looking through and I'm giving her thing and I'm going, you know, Judy, you've been participating in our talks for a while and some of these paintings, these photographs were done way before you kind of found the light and the, you know, the idea. So, so she likes to kind of hold into where she's comfortable at and make it better and I'm like trying to shake her up saying, no, no, you're not the same Judy anymore. Let's just kind of turn it up. And she says, well, I don't know how to do that. And I say, well, instead of having a platform flat plane for a table, throw some boxes underneath the um, fabrics and, and get some height and you know so it's not just all flat. Look for big shapes and small shapes. Throw everything on and take it out or manipulate it. Um, a lot of the art, a lot of the people who do still lives paint things that have nothing in common with each other. They'll put like a, a silver beautiful teapot and lemon and then stick something old and cruddy next to it just because they needed a different size and it's, it doesn't have to make sense. But it's how do you work with these objects and lights and things. You know, think out of the box. And then you take that and not only do you give us like the box that it came in and you have the, the little piggy bank off there or the fuzzy. Um, but you throw in the whole four-year-old at the time because you heard four-year-old you're just like And see, how do you do that? It's like you... <laughs> now, did you have a picture that you copied or you just kind of threw... Uh... Well, I mean, I, Lila was sitting there and I says, hold up the piggy bank and I took a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? She held it up and made a face. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't look like, she's like, oh, great, another piggy bank. <laughs> No, she's, uh, she's adorable. But the thing is, what's really great about it is that you take whatever I suggest and take it to the next level. If I tell you that I want you to paint a rose, think about, okay, a rose and what? Now, I teach a thing called Power to Create, and some of you have actually done it. But in the Power to Create class, we do the same subject five times in one week. Mm -hmm. And the students are required to have those paintings done, plus 100 drawings. But if I say the, uh, this week's homework assignment is five paintings that illustrate a surprise, the first one or two are easy. It's the last three mm. that become difficult mm. because you don't want to paint the same subject over and over and over again. So it's like, how can I make this different? Mm. And what I love about you is that you say that question before we start. <laughs> you take, you're, you're just a natural surprise. I mean, we really never, you're not, you're so unpredictable. But that's really where we need to be. You know, we need to be out of the box. We got to think out of the box. Think about something that's, if I tell you something, um, this week's homework assignment that, that everybody's working on, you guys are getting it two weeks late, but they're taking the idea and they've taken it up a notch or two. You know, it, it brings me right back to the, to the uh, time when I was at the Academy of Art. And at the end of the semester, we had to do a self-portrait. Mm. And I had no idea what the self-portrait was supposed to be like. But, and she didn't give us any perimeters, but I showed up in class with the self-portrait. And it was just me looking in a mirror, <laughs> outline, you know. Mm -hmm. Not that good. I was kind of young at the Academy. But it was me out there. 
And then I all of a sudden saw all these other portfolio pieces and they were people in the dark with the light hitting them and people looking in mirrors and, and I'm like going, God, I'm so stupid. <laughs> you know, stupid. And why didn't I just take a picture of myself and trace it? I mean, it was dumb. Yeah. But boy, you know, I was with 30 artists that had really awesome stuff because they had been in the school for a while. This is my first semester. So I had to start thinking, how do I think at a different level? And then I look at artists who really think at a different level and I go, God, I can't think like that. I need to sharpen up my ideas. And we were talking about just taking an object and flipping it on its side. It causes a whole new idea. You know, think about it. And I tell you, most paintings fail because you don't come up with a concept. And the concept is done at the beginning. That's before you even start. You have to think about it just like this. This didn't just happen. She staged it. She made it happen. She got her, her granddaughter to get into the pose, to get the idea. But she had to come up here. You know, if I tell you to draw a stick of bubble gum, what can you do with that? I don't know, but that's half the fun. In the Power to Create class, you had to do five, so you had to think differently. But then when we have 30 artists that are doing five paintings, and everybody's doing the last three, which are really hard, you start seeing a huge variety of ideas that you have never seen before. And that's the power of the crate class because you get to see other ways. And this class is really great because you get to see other ways. You know, you're like looking at still lifes going, oh, they're not so still after all. We can actually manipulate the things and do stuff with them. So it's all about bringing in new ideas. New year, new ideas. Um, so anyway, so what we have is we have this. Now, um, this, is, this is a painting of things. As good as it is, it's still a painting of things. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, it's like Christmas morning. Which way is the light coming from? Kind of just all over the room. I mean, I, 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 see, I think most of it was coming right at her. Okay. So, first thing, is this Christmas morning or Christmas Eve? It's the next day after Christmas morning. Well, it's Christmas morning. So it's a morning class, yeah. See, and that makes a difference. If you decided to make a Christmas Eve painting, then all this would be lit up with Christmas lights. So you'd have multiple colored lights on this scene. So it makes a difference at what time it is. Then, if, if this is Christmas morning, you could have had a really beautiful stream of light coming from a window outside and really get the lighting effect. So you did a really beautiful job with all of the things in the painting, as well illustrated. But for it to be a masterpiece, it really has to have the element of effect. And that goes beyond the thing itself. And to create the feeling of first in the morning. Darker, kind of cold shadows, shadows that are like deep and dark. Beautiful light coming from the, from the window. Snow lit, very cool in color. You know, something that almost feels like there's snow on the outside. I mean, if you could actually create that. Um, there's a Frognard painting in the Legion of Honor that's this big. If you ask me what paintings there are in the Legion of Honor, I could probably call six of them. And out of those six, I think three of them are this size. And it's a, it's a painting of two sisters playing. Um, they're hitting each other in the morning uh, with pillows. And so it's a pillow fight with the, with the window open in a dark room. And so one sister's got her pillow like this and the other one's kind of like this, you know. And you could see they're just having fun in there. And then the light's just hitting in such a way. And it's so striking that a little painting like this is actually the thing that I can think of in the Legion of Honor. And it's all because of the lighting, the time of day, the action. All of that is happening. I can totally relate to that. I can think back to my, myself being a... A uh, little kid playing with my sister, torturing her. I'd make sure I'd have the pillows and she didn't have anything. Okay. So, so even like having this part in shadow and highlights. And when you're playing with lights and shadows, you can take ordinary to extraordinary and you can really create effect and really push it. So rather than having light on the pig, it, granted that's a surprise, but right now she's blocking the light. And if you brought light onto her and brought shadows, had this pig actually in the shadow, because it's really not that important for the overall scene, 
the painting would go from ordinary to extraordinary. And it's already good. It's more than ordinary now. But it would be a Fragnard painting that you'd see at the Legion of Honor. It's that good. Yeah, it's, so you just need to take it to the next step. Now if I told you that I'm going to enter this into a show for you at the Legion of Honor, and I want you to go home and paint you know, on this, and turn it into something that is extraordinary like that, man, you would be painting with your toes curled and a little bit sharper. So you kind of have to think, that's where you need to be to create really great art. And it's all because it's about communication. You know, remember, we go through life because we want to look good, and we have a fear of looking bad. If you know that your work is going to be judged and viewed, you don't want to look bad, which causes you to try to look good. We all have egos. Mm -hmm. And those people who say we don't have egos, I guarantee you, they have, they've taken showers in the morning. <laughs> you know, we all want to look good, right? How many of you didn't shower this morning? Do your hair. How many of you put clothes on and didn't show up in your, there's no pajamas here. <laughs> if you want to see people with no ego, go to Walmart. <laughs> that's probably the only place that you have no ego. But everywhere else, we have ego, and that's good. And we have a fear of not looking bad. So if you know that you're going to go and put it out there, you're going to work a little harder to make it a little bit better. And that's kind of my, uh, my thing with the coach, is that I have to make you guys look better. Mm. Now I have two new students that are in a class. And if we don't scare them off today, they should come with homework this week. Now, their big fear right now is like, oh my God, I'm going to do homework. I don't know what to do with these people. So, <laughs> just remember, these people here were where you are now. They all started off just like you. And the biggest mistake that you can do is not play. And just allow whatever shows up this week for your homework assignment, just let it happen. Because you will learn week by week by week. You'll learn what not to do. And if you jump in, you will learn painting faster. I guarantee you, this part of the class is the class. The rest of it out there, I kind of help you, but this is the class. You do this well, you'll be a master painter in a year. You'll be as good as my students are. So don't be fearful of that. But remember, homework is optional. But it's up to you to take it on if you want. Of course, that will probably never show up anyway. But Are you enjoying the class? Are you enjoying the class? Huh? You enjoy the class? I enjoy the class. Okay. What else can she say? These are really nice people when you get to know them. Of course. Yeah. My, my students are the great. Okay, so this week's homework assignment Again, think about maybe entering this into one of the competitions that are coming up this year. You've got plenty of time. This would be great for Rocco. This would be great for you. Not a fish in No fishes. I want a good composition with a central focal point. I want eye magnets, checkering, all the things we talk about. I want you to play with this as if your life depended on it. And I want you to not only just paint it as things, but give it a twist. Some of my students that have done this homework assignment have already taken this on. And I just asked for the one thing. And they made it into something. They were doing the power to create with it. So think about that for a sec while you're painting it. But don't be overly clever. But test yourself a little bit. So the homework assignment this week, origami. <laughs>